everyone. I hope you are having a great Friday. If you're new here, my name is Carly Bell, and I love to get together with y'all every other Friday for a live machine embroidery tutorial from start to finish that we call Sip and Stitch. So this is the morning edition of our Sip and Stitch. So I have coffee, but I left it on my other table. <laughs> so I'll get it in a minute. But thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited. I love the starts of New Year's because I, it really helps get me out of whatever I funk I was in at the end of the year with all the stress of the holidays and everything and just that fresh start, even, even though it, you can have a fresh start whenever you want. The new year is when I really feel like it takes effect. So I hope you all had a great um, holiday and a great New Year's. And I'm so excited that you're here. So I'm going to check the chat real quick. I was looking at it before we started. So hi to all of our, our um, friends that are here that I see a lot, like Star and Norma, uh, Norma and Joe. And I see Connie and Cindy. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. So today's show is a little different than what we normally do. So like I said, for the new year, it, it just like, this is my reset. This is like, okay, I'm going to get stuff done now. And you know what I've gotten done so far? Nothing. <laughs> so we're going to talk about what I and you are going to, uh, you and I well, uh, are going to get done this year in our craft rooms and what we're going to make and what we're going to learn. And especially if you are new to machine embroidery. Um, let me know in the chat. If you're watching live, let me know in the chat. If you're watching the replay later, let me know in the comments below the video. Did you get a machine for Black Friday or um, Christmas um, as a gift from yourself or from a family member? Um, did you get an embroidery machine and have absolutely no clue where to start? Because that is what I want to help you with. <laughs> So I'm going to look in the chat real quick. So I know a lot of our friends here have been with me for a couple of years and have been embroidering and doing different projects. But I recently sent out a survey um, in my Facebook group. So if you're not already a member in my Facebook group, I have a link for it down below. Um, and a lot of people were like, I just, I need the basics. I need, I need to go back to the beginning and really get a hold of understanding how to use my machine and what stabilizers are what and what tools do we need. So, um, yay, Sandra said she got a baby lock flare. Congratulations. Um, excited for you. All right, here we go. We have Sally saying she got a brand new PE 800 yesterday. Congratulations, Sally. I'm excited for you. That is the machine that I started out with. I actually started out with an older model of that machine. They called it the PE770. Um, and then I found out recently, Brother is releasing a new one called the PE900, but I haven't actually seen it for sale anywhere yet. Um, but all those machines, 770, 800, 900, those are great machines to start off with if you've never embroidered before and you wanna see um, if you like it, if you enjoy it. But I'm going to warn you, if you do like it and enjoy it, start saving your pennies because you're going to want to upgrade. <laughs> All right. Let's see. All right. Shonda saying here, I'm a newbie. I have no clue. I started exactly where you did. So I understand how you feel totally. All right. And here's, hey, Jenny. So she said nothing new, but always looking for new tips and tricks. So this is the thing that I have learned over the years is that no matter how much you do, I guarantee you, you still have more to learn. And I learn myself on a regular basis. So even though I've been doing this for years, there are still things that I am learning, you know, on a, on a daily, weekly basis from watching others or from trial and error um, on my own, you know, in my own project. So there's always more that you can learn. Right, let me, I just remembered I didn't turn off my ringer on my phone. So let me do that. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, so Sharon's here. She said um, she got hers as a gift and she got the SE600 um, and need the basics. So we're gonna go over some of that today, Sharon. All right, Beth got a PE800. Congrats, Beth. Ooh, and Paula got something fancy. Paula got a Janome multi-needle machine. Yay, it actually got delivered a few minutes ago. How exciting. Congrats, Paula. Oh, Terry. Terry, you need uh you do need another machine. Terry already has a six needle. You need another one. I love that. Yay. Oh, Joanne, sweet. So um, she bought a PRS 100, um, the brother persona, um, about a week ago and has been soaking up all of my videos because she knows nothing. But now you do. So now you're going down the rabbit hole of embroidery. I'm so excited for you. You are going to love it. All right. So yay, I'm loving reading all the comments. Um, I can't catch up with them though, there's so many. So um, I'm excited for all of you and I want to help you. That is, that is my whole goal here is to help you because a little bit of backstory on me. I, um, I honestly can't say I ever noticed embroidery until I had babies. When I had the baby shower for my first daughter, Abigail, who's 10 years old now. So over 11 years ago, I had um, a baby shower and you get all the adorable little baby girl gifts. And we had known that she was a girl and we knew what we were going to name her before the baby shower. So people got us monogrammed and embroidered baby gifts. And I instantly fell in love like the little blanket with her name on it and little onesie with her monogram like I was that was it that hooked me and so when she was born I then I noticed it and then I'm I, as I'm looking on the internet I'm looking in stores I'm like oh that's embroidered that's embroidered that's embroidered like for me I just never never paid attention before so um and of course I had absolutely no clue how it was done um so then I went down the rabbit hole of wanting all of her things embroidered and monogrammed. And especially when birthdays came around. Um, I remember my friend Sheena, when she had her little girls the same age as mine. And when Ellie's first birthday came around, she got this whole birthday um, outfit for her with an embroidered shirt with the number one. And I forget what her theme was. I think maybe it was Minnie. And then a cute little, it wasn't a tutu, but it was like a... Um, scrappy fabric layered skirt to go with it and I was like oh but she paid I think well close to a hundred dollars for that outfit and I'm like I can't afford to do <laughs> to to keep buying all these things I want to learn how to do it myself um so my aunt and I were she was just as into it as I was um with like you know thinking that it's so cool so we went on this hunt to find information on how do we do it? And it was not easy. And then this was like in 2012. So when I look back at it, YouTube was not my place where like, if I didn't know something, I went to YouTube and looked for it. It, it wasn't as popular for looking up um, how to do things back then. So I didn't really find much. And then our local quilt shop was like an hour and a half away from us. So it wasn't convenient for us to go there if we bought a machine and go there and take classes. So we got a machine. She actually bought a nice machine and I just figured it out. And then from that point, once like a year of playing with her machine, I was like, okay, I think I got this. I'm ready for my own machine. But now that I know the things that I like to make and the things that I need, I don't need all the bells and whistles like she had because I couldn't afford it at the time. Um, I just wanted a basic machine five by seven hoop was my go-to hoop, all the baby items. Um, so I got the PE 770. So that's where I started. And after years of doing that, and I decided to start the website and the YouTube channel, I was like, I want to help people that was in my shoes back in 2012 that didn't have the resources that they needed to learn how to use their machine. And nowadays, you know, everything can be virtual. So if you don't have a quilt shop that's close to you that you can go and take lessons, 
that's what that's what I want to do here. So that's just a little backstory of how um, I got started. So, yay, let's see. You should have been looking in the early 90s, yes. So, yay, okay. All right, I'm just checking the chat here. So, okay, I kind of went off. I kind of lost my train of thought, so sorry about that. So, for today's show, I want to take you back to you got your machine, now what? Because I can honestly say, you know, you're forking over all this money because embroidery machines are not cheap. Even the smallest model is around nine, it, not the smallest, the one I recommend, the PE 800, is around $900. There are smaller than that. I can tell you the four by four machines are great. There are lots of things that you can do with it, but you will outgrow it very, very quickly. So if you can afford, if you're looking at machines now and can afford a little bit more, go for a machine with at least a five by seven hoop. Um, so fork that all this money for the machine and then like, I got to buy thread, I have to buy stabilizer, embroidery software, do I really need that? Like all these little things and that's just started adding up. And so that's what I want to show you today so that when you get into this, you know what you're getting into because it's not just the machine. You need several key pieces of supplies to be actually ready to make the things that you want to make on your embroidery machine. So, all right. Okay, so just check, keep checking the chat. I'm sorry, I get distracted a little bit easily. Um, so, I did want to tell you something. I'm trying to figure out if I want to tell you something first. Okay. I don't know what to do. So I have something I've been holding in and been working on a little bit behind the scenes, but then have just like, I don't know. I, I was never ready, but I finally decided I'm ready. So we talked about all these things and you want someone to hold your hand. Now I have tons of videos that help guide you through projects. And like, we're gonna do a video today on the supplies that you need. But if you are the type of person that doesn't wanna go digging for all of those tutorials and really wants someone to hold your hand and take you step-by-step step through the process, I decided 2023 is gonna be the year. And so I'm finally, I've been talking about this forever. I'm finally going to release a course specific to brand new people in embroidery to guide you through using your machine from the get-go. So let me tell you a little bit about it. It's not completely ready yet, but it's called From Start to Stitch, and it is a beginner course in machine embroidery. So what it's going to entail is nine detailed modules, and these are the nine modules that it's going to be in the course. It's going to be an embroidery machine overview. And this is going to just go over all the pieces of the machine, no matter what kind you have. But we will dive into the interface of a Brother PE 800. And I can say if you, no matter what Brother machine you have or Baby Lock machine you have, the interface is the same. Now, Janome and... Um, Bernina and other brands are going to have a little bit different interfaces, but they're still going to have the same key components. And we'll go, we'll go into that in those. We're going to go over a more in-depth view of the supplies needed. We're going to talk all about stabilizers and give you details on what stabilizers you need for what projects and all the different kinds. Uh, we're going to go over how to hoop and specifically how to hoop different items. So we'll go over how to hoop a shirt how to hoop a towel, how to hoop a bag. So we'll go into all those different examples of things, common things that people need to hoop. Um, then we'll go over the types of stitches and the different types of designs that they have because they had tons of them. We will go over how to applique. And then we'll touch on embroidery software and how it works and why you need it. And then the last one is going to be maintenance on your machine and common troubleshooting tips. So I'm super excited about finally releasing this course. I know lots of people have been asking for something like this 
four years now, and I'm, I'm finally going to do it. <laughs> However, it is not completely ready yet. So what I've done is I've made a wait list. So if you are a newbie and you just got the machine or you've got your machine and you've played with it and you are really pulling your hair out, join the wait list. All you need to do is click the link below the video and it tells you a little bit about what the course is going to be like, just like what I did there. And you just put your name and your email and that is going to put you on a list. So when the course is ready, you will be the first emailed telling you, hey, the course is ready now if you want to sign up. And I am going to offer something special. So I, this is when the course does open, it's only going to open for a week. And you can sign up in that week if you want to, and then it's going to close. If you sign up during that first week, I'm going to have a discount. And then I will open it again in the future. But for my first round of students, um, as a thank you, I want to make sure that it's a good discounted price um, and that y'all can let me know how you like the course and make sure that it meets everyone's expectations. So I've, I've been really excited about this and I've been, I keep debating on whether or not I'm actually going to do it. And I decided this is the time. So um, that link is below. If you're interested, it just puts you on a list. You're not obligated for anything. And then I'll give you more info once the course is actually ready. Fingers crossed. I'm hoping next month. Um, and don't, don't hold me to that because y'all know I'm, I'm not the best planner. But that is my goal this year is to be better at planning. <laughs> so hopefully next month it will be ready to sign up. Okay. And um, let's go ahead and dive into today because I, I do, I want to make sure we're going over all the things that you need to know. But if you have any questions about the course, um, you can let me know in the comments and, um, and I will try to answer them for you. Okay. So yay. Okay. All right. How do I sign up? Okay. So I see some people saying sign up and I see some people saying, how do I sign up? Um, on the video, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, there should be a description, whether it be um, a little arrow that you have to press and then it gets expanded. It's, it's a lot, like it's paragraphs of stuff because I have links for everything that we're doing today. But um, right after the little paragraph telling you what today's video is about, there should be um, a little like siren emoji and say from start to stitch wait list and a link. And you just click that and it brings you to the page where you put your name and your email and that's all you need to do. So, um, and that's just going to put you on the wait list and you will be notified when the course opens, okay? All right, I, I see people asking how much. I haven't totally decided on a price yet, but I'm very much leaning that the price for the course will be $97. Um, but then my first time students will get a discount. So I haven't figured out what that's going to be yet exactly, but it will be below $97. Okay, I see Sandra saying double click the description that will open it up. Yay. Okay, and Linda has a good question. Will I be doing this for more advanced embroiders? Yes. So my goal is to start from the beginning and help all those people that don't know where to start. And then after that, I want to do a more advanced course. And then I really enjoy doing workshops. We did the um, holiday, the Sip and Stitch holiday workshop um, last November, where we did like a week long of different um, holiday projects. That was really fun. So I had a lot of suggestions after I did that to do more of those. And we'll probably do them around themes, whether like we have a in the hoop workshop or um, a applique workshop, or we can do, you know, different holidays or, um, evolve them around babies and kids and things like that. So I'm hoping to do more of all those things this year, but we're going to start with the beginning and that's from start to stitch. All right. So some questions about the course. So one thing that I want to make sure with my beginner embroidery course is that you can watch it whenever you want. So, and I want it to be detailed and to get to the point. 
because I know I love doing lives, but lives are not for everyone because you can't all, you know, not everyone can get there at the same time. Some people live in totally different time zones where it's not even possible and they tend to be long and you, you have to, you know, there's lots of information in there, but to get to what you need to know might be hard. So for the beginner course, it is going to be pre-recorded and detailed and to the point so that you are getting the information that you are looking for. However, lives help a lot. So what we will be doing is having live Q&A sessions probably every other week um, to help you after you've watched the different modules and you have questions about specific parts. So we'll do probably live Zooms or Facebook Lives um, for just the students to answer questions. So it's going to be a combination of both. Well, you'll get um, pre-recorded to the point instruction that you can watch whenever is convenient for you. And then we'll have live Q&A sessions to ask questions. And those, of course, will be recorded so not everyone can make it. And then we'll have a private Facebook group um, for you to ask questions whenever you need anything and if you can't make a live Q&A session. So that is my goal with this program. All right, do you need a specific machine? No, I'm hoping that I this will be broad enough that it will cover the true basics of embroidery. However, everything in the demonstration parts of the video will be done on a PE 800. So you'll see me using the PE 800 to show you how um, different stitches work and um, the machine overview. But this really will apply to any embroidery machine. Now, the main difference would be it's definitely geared more towards flatbed machines. Um, in the future, I might do a multi-needle uh, machine basics, but this is geared more to those that have just bought a small um, machine similar to a PE 800. All right. Okay. All right, I think I answered most of the questions. I see more about the link. So the, the link is down below. Let me see. I don't even know how to get to it so I could put it in the chat. Um, here, here it is. Okay, let me put it in the chat for those of you that can't find it in the description box. Okay, so that is the link just to get on the wait list so that you are notified when the course is open. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see that. All right, okay, so let's go ahead and move on to today's. So I've gathered all of my favorite embroidery supplies in my craft room. I have them on my table now, and I'm gonna go through each one and tell you what I use them for. So I can say the first thing that I was really hesitant to buy after I spent all my money on my machine was software. I just, I was like another, you know, cause the software I, I bought was $140, $130. And I was like, do I need, do I need that? Can't the machine just do what I want it to do? And the answer is yes and no. If you are hesitant to buy software, go ahead and use what you have on your machine. And it is still purchase designs online and put them on your machine. But you will learn very quickly having software is much easier. And I'm gonna give you some examples. The whole thing I wanted to do was make Abigail cute little shirts with her name. So I wanted a cute little applique and either it's like an applique circle or heart and I wanted to put her initials in them or her name in them. At the time, I couldn't do that on my machine. I couldn't merge two designs, but you can now. So that's a good news um, if you have the um, something newer than the PE 770. Um, and so you can do that now, but embroidery fonts are not fun to import one at a time and then line them up and make sure um, everything looks good. So. If you plan on 
personalizing things and using fonts that didn't come with your machine, but all the pretty fonts that we see online, I highly, highly recommend that you get embroidery software. And the software that I recommend and use is in Brilliance. And I've had several video tutorials showing you how to use in Brilliance. I have a blog post going through all the different programs that they offer. We actually did a sip and stitch on in Brilliance. Oh, uh, was it in November? I think it was in November. So if you look at my past videos, you can see some tutorials on how to use that software, why it's so helpful. So that's my first thing I want to warn you when you get a machine, you're probably going to need to buy, you're going to need to buy software. Just, just do it. <laughs> all right. And then people think when, when they think software, they think making designs and stuff. Yes, they have amazing software that you can make your own designs. But get to that further down the road. Learn how to use your machine first. Um, and another thing, another really common question we get in our Facebook group is, I bought a design online and I can't open it. I can't look at it. No. If you don't have embroidery software, your computer does not even know how to open an, uh, anything from an embroidery design. So embroidery designs come in several different formats depending on which machine you have and your computer doesn't know how to open any of them. So that's another really helpful thing with um, Embrilliance Essentials, which is the first program um, and the, the program that you should start with and get. Um, and maybe the only thing you need is it helps you visualize it and see all the steps and see how it's going to stitch out. So even if you don't want to change it, just seeing it is super helpful if you don't have a machine with a big screen on it so that you could see it. So um, that is something that is commonly asked is I can't, I can't open it. So you won't be able to unless you have software. All right. So next on my list is thread. So lots of questions about thread, um, what kind you should use, and there are tons of different brands of thread. So I'm going to tell you what I use and I've learned, I've, I've loved over the years, um, is exquisite um, embroidery thread. It is a polyester embroidery thread. Um, it comes in 40 weight is what embroidery thread is. Um, and they have a rainbow of colors. So... I got some new ones because I just, I placed an order when I was doing Christmas presents and I realized that I was running out of several of my, my favorite colors. So let me put you on the craft table so that you can see what we're looking at. Where is my thing? Wait, sorry, I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so this is... Um, the embroidery thread, I get spools of, what is it, 1,000 meters, 1K meters, yeah, and it's exquisite is the, is the brand, and all, they have a huge rainbow of colors, and um, they're each cataloged by a um, letter and number system, so these are some I haven't opened yet, but I get them from Sewing Machines Plus. They're actually made by uh, if you're familiar with Dime, is a company called Designs in Machine Embroidery. They have tons of great products. I love pretty much everything they make. And um, their thread is no exception. So it's really, really great. Um, they do have, if you're brand new and don't have any thread, they do have some sets um, that you can buy. I think a 30 color set and a 60 color set. That's what I did when I started. And then I started noticing
I don't know what's going on. Okay. Okay, now you can hear me. I'm so sorry, guys. It's been so long since I had te technical difficulties. That's a, a great way to start off the new year. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. Okay, glad. Okay, now I'm seeing a lot of people saying they can hear me now. Oh, okay. Thank you for bearing with me. So sorry about that. Um, I don't know what's going on with my microphone, but it was not happy. Um, I changed the batteries, but then it still wasn't happy. So I hope it's happy now. <laughs> Um, thank you for um, bearing with me. Blame, blame Blaine for sending the gremlins. <laughs> I'm going to tell him that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, for understanding. Okay. We were talking about thread. Um, beautiful, exquisite thread. I get it from Sewing Machines Plus. Um, if you're brand new, I started with a set um, of 30 or 60. I can't remember. Um, different colors. Uh, and then I kind of went from there and I got, I don't know where I got this. Where is it even for me to show you? Oh, I had it somewhere. I had a thread chart of exquisite. I had like a little printout pamphlet um, thread chart of exquisite. And I went through and I highlighted all the colors I have. I remember I scanned it and I have it on my computer. I'm going to, um, I plan on making a chart of all my favorite colors so that if you are brand new, you can look at that chart and see maybe where you should start. Cause like some people are like, I'll get the, the set. And then some people looks at the set and they're like, I don't think that's going to work for me. And those are not all the color, the color schemes that I really go with. So you can figure it out for yourself on whether you want to go with the pre-made set or just go through and pick out all of your favorite colors. So, okay. That is the first thing is thread. So you want, I use polyester 40 weight. Then the next thing you need. So your, your machine needs two types of thread, right? We come in from the top. We need our embroidery thread. They come in from the bottom, we use bobbin thread. And that's where embroidery is different from typical sewing is that when normal sewing, I use the same color thread for my top and bobbin. And I'll wind a bobbin with this thread. Embroidery is different because you're not, the way the stitching happens, you're not gonna see the bobbin on the bottom. So bobbin thread is 90 weight. And I'm going to tell you this right now because it took me years to finally break down. Buy pre-wound bobbins. They come in a box. They come with what feels like a lifetime supply of bobbins already wound and ready to go and load in your machine. I always use white bobbin thread. They do also sell black, but I always use white. It never failed that when I was winding my own bobbins, I used to just buy a big spool of bobbin thread and wind my own. I always ran out in the worst possible time. <laughs> so if any advice you take today, buy pre-wound bobbins. And this box here is specific for Brother and Baby Lock flatbed machines. Um, the link that I have for you is, is for Brother and Baby Lock flatbed. If you have a bigger machine, I see someone asked about the persona. Um, let me get that box. If you have a bigger free arm machine, you are going to get different bobbins. That is these. These are pre-wound. And you notice they don't have like an actual bobbin case, um, but they have a magnetic back. That is going to be for your free arm machine. So I use this on my Persana, my Brother 6 needle, and my Recoma 10 needle. All three of those use the same. This is called Style L. And these are called Size or Style. I can't remember. This is Size A, Size L. Um, that is the two different ones. So depending on what kind of machine you have, you might need a different bobbin. But if you can buy pre-wound bobbins for your machine, buy them buy them. 
So um, I have the link in the description down below and the link on the Sip and Stitch homepage is for this one, the size A for any brother baby lock flatbed machine. Um, in my other videos where I use my persona or my Recoma for a tutorial, I have a link to these. So just um, message me at the end of the show and I'll send you the link for this one if you need it. All right, so we've done thread, we've done bobbins. What's next on the list? Now we get to talk about stabilizer. Now, stabilizer is a whole show on its own. And in the course, we're really going to dive into stabilizer. But I've pulled out my favorites that I use. So a lot of times when people um, start with embroidery, they're like, oh, I'm just going to buy one roll of cutaway. I want to warn you now you are going to want to buy multiple types of stabilizer because what kind of stabilizer you use depends on what kind of project you are stitching, okay? So I'm gonna show you my favorite stabilizers, my go-tos that I use for everything. All right, and I, I got different options here. Um, the brand that I like is Stay Perfect. It comes in two options. It comes in these nice um, pre-cut sheets in the little um, bag here and they have different sizes um, depending on what size hoop you are using. So these are all my mine for my five by seven hoop. And then they also sell them in rolls um, where you get a roll. So this roll is 12 inches and then it's 10 yards of the stabilizer in there. And so then you just cut what you need um, as you go. So I have a variety of both for my pre-cut sheets and let's go over the different kinds real quick. Uh, okay, cutaway. This is medium weight cutaway and this, it, it all depends on the project you use, but you wanna think about stabilizers um, this way. The more, the sturdier your fabric is or the item you're embroidering, if you're, Fabric is sturdy, and I'm like when you say when I say sturdy, sturdy, I'm thinking of canvas, towels, something with a tight knit that's not stretchy and thick. The sturdier your fabric is, the less stabilizer you need. The thinner and stretchier your fabric is, the more stabilizer you need, or the 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 more. Um, I had, how do I say more stable stabilizer? <laughs> You'll understand what I'm saying in a second. But um, so that's that's how I think about stabilizer. So cutaway is a sturdy stabilizer. It's it's um, it's thicker. It's uh, it has the the whole thing with stabilizers is either you cut it or you tear it. So the tearaway stabilizers are like paper; they tear. Cutaway you can't. So this is for your thin stuff, right? Um, and there's two main kinds that I use, a medium weight cutaway and a fuse no-show cutaway. So this one is a lot thinner. When you feel it, it's thin, it's, it's, um, it's more flexible. This is more stiff, kind of feels like cardstock paper, but it doesn't tear. Um, this is thinner and has like a more drape to it, I guess you would say. Um, and it, it does, it doesn't tear. Um, and those are the two cutaways I use. So I like this one for shirts. Um, the few, the no mat, the no show mesh. Um, and I always say, if you can get, if a stabilizer comes with a fusible option, get that. That doesn't mean to say that you're always going to use your iron and iron it on your projects. But if you want to, you have you have the option because it's it's fusible and ready to go. So these are the two cutaways I recommend. The I get the fusible poly mesh. I don't the medium cutaway doesn't come in a fusible option. So that is how it is. All right. The next kind of stabilizers are tear away. Um, and there are several different kinds that I have to show you. This is a medium weight tear away. Um, that is just what it says. It's 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 thinner. It's like paper, and it actually tears when you pull on it. Right. 
Um, this is a fusible tearaway, so it has that iron-on backing if you need it. And then this is a sticky tearaway, and it has a piece where you can peel and it exposes a sticky back to it, but it's still a tearaway. So those are the, the tearaways. I, if you just need to buy one, get the fuse, fuse and tear. And then you'll see for other projects, you might want different ones. But if you just have to buy one, get the fuse and tear. The peel and stick stabilizer is great when you start doing something called floating. And I've done that in a few of my sip and stitch and sip and stitches, and we'll cover that a, a lot in the course. Okay, and Terry brings up a great um, point, and I'm gonna get to that in a second, um, where she's talking about spray. All right, so that is the tearaways. The last couple are for different things. So here we go. One is called water soluble topper. This is what you're gonna put on top of your embroidery to keep your threads from sinking into the item. Think fluffy towels, fluffy blankets. I use it on all of my um, knit uh, shirts. I find it when I'm doing satin stitching um, that it stays better. So water soluble topper. Whenever you hear people say, oh, you should use a topper, this is what they're talking about and it dissolves in water. Um, and then when you're doing clothing, specifically children's clothing, the inside of the shirt after you are done stitching is rough and they have all those threads on the inside of the shirt and you don't want, the kids are gonna complain with that rubbing against their skin. So this is a fusible interfacing that just goes on the back of the embroidery, the back of the shirt that's super soft and keeps all those threads from rubbing on the baby or kid's skin. So if you're doing any kid's clothing, definitely get that. And that is called Fuse So Soft. So I have links to all of these in the box below and on the Sip and Stitch homepage, okay? And also a reminder, um, you can use coupon code Carly Bell for any supplies you buy at Sewing Machines Plus. Um, Carly Bell will get you 10% off. It doesn't work on machines, but it works. Okay, so now that we are done with stabilizer, let's talk about the thing that Terry just mentioned. So say you are putting something on the stabilizer and you're floating. If you're familiar with floating, you know what I'm talking about. We're not hooping it. We're floating it on top of the stabilizer and you don't have a sticky stabilizer or you don't have a fusible, you can use something called basting adhesive. Um, this is a spray adhesive that's not too sticky, so it won't gum up your needle. Um, and if you've used sticky things on your machine before, you know what I'm talking about. It could leave like a glue residue on your needle and mess up either the project you're working on or, or the next project you work on. So basting spray is a great thing to keep in your craft room. Um, that can help you keep things um, on the stabilizer and on the hoop when you're stitching. That was on my list. Let's see, what was next though? I think next was my scissors. Okay. So when you start stitching and you start doing applique, you need applique scissors. Um, now there are several different kinds of applique scissors. Um, and I've used several of them. This is my favorite. These are snips that can work like tweezers, but they have a curved um, edge on it. You see how it, it comes up a little bit and it has a really pointy tip. I use these scissors for everything from cutting my and trimming my applique to trimming jump stitches, any tails, anything. These are my go-to scissors. So my favorite pair. If you just need to buy one besides a regular pair of scissors to have fabric scissors, get these, okay? Next is needles. I have a few different needles here. Um, I get questions a lot about um, what kind of needle do I need and, and what kind of project needs what kind of needle. 
90% of the time when you're using your machine, you need a 7511 embroidery needle. Um, Oregon and Schmetz um, are the ones that I use the most. Um, and like I said, 90% of the projects that you're going to make on your machine use this needle. Um, once in a while, I have a project like I was doing, um, I was making stuffed animals on my embroidery machine. I was making those stuffed bunnies for my girls and my needle kept breaking because it was just so fluff. I was using really thick, fluffy material um, and it was just, and it was lots of layers and it was too much. Then I switched to a 9014 embroidery needle. So if you have situations where you're working on something really thick and your needle keeps breaking, um, it might be that you need a stronger needle. When you get a machine, you usually get a little package like this in your kit. Um, and that is going to have both the, uh, 11 and 14 needles in it. Sorry, this is not always focusing. Um, and it comes in a little piece of foil like this. And this is when you probably need to have a magnifying glass in your craft room because the lettering is so small. But I think the 90 has that red tip, so at least I could find it easier. But when you're looking at it, very small engraved, it says Oregon 7511 at the top. So that is the needle you need the most. Um, every once in a while, I'll switch to a smaller needle, which is a 65.9. Um, and that is when I'm doing really intricate, small lettering or designs. A smaller needle sometimes helps. Um, but like I said, 90% of the time, you want that um, 7511 embroidery needle. And most of them come what's called ballpoint which when you think of a pin, you think of that rounded uh, tip and not a sharp pointy tip. Um, and the ballpoint needles are great for stitching on stretchy items like um, knit cotton shirts. So I usually always have the ballpoint 7511 on my machine. Oh, Joe says she has a magnifying light. That sounds great. I need that. All right, next on the list. Okay, I'm gonna show you all of my go-to like little tools that I love and I use in every project. So I got this little stand, let's see if I could lay it, um, in one of my Kimberbell Bella boxes. And I have a video on that if you're not familiar with it, but it's a really fun subscription box where you get like everything you need to make five or six different projects. And they usually come with a little um, notion. And so this box came with this little holder, but I've seen these at Michael's. Um, so these little things are fun. So I always have this and these are the things I have. I have a um, water soluble erasable fabric pen. This is what I use to mark all of my um, things that I'm embroidering to figure out placement. I always have a really fine tip precision tweezers those I love. I always have my applique scissors. Then I have, oh, this is my new favorite tool. This is a stiletto. It's made by Clover. It has a silicone tip and then like a hook here. And it's made for sewing. Like when you're guiding your fabric under the presser foot, uh, when you're sewing. Um, but I use it a lot for embroidery to make sure things are staying where I want while I'm stitching. Um, and because it has that silicone tip, it even works on my machine when like I'm pressing buttons on my machine. Um, but it's really great. I've been using this like for everything. Then unfortunately we need a seam ripper sometimes. And we were talking about this fabric pen. Um, when I'm done stitching, now this goes away with water. It, the purple side also goes away with air. But if I'm like in a rush and I, I want the marks gone, a tied pen works great for getting those marks out immediately and without having to like completely soak my project. Speaking of soaking projects, um, a water, a spray water bottle is great to have when you're working because if you put that water soluble topper on anything, you can get any residue off with a, a water bottle. So I always have like a little spray water bottle in my craft room, both for removing, removing placement marks 
and removing water soluble topper. Other little things. Um, if I'm working on something black or dark in my marker, I can't see my placement marks. I have a little white chalk pencil. And this is a bag turner um, from Clover when I'm making um, in the hoop bags to turn them out or stuff animals. This was, I think that's for my daughter. That was something she made, she used for a craft. I have little scissors. Um, these are my vinyl cutting scissors, um, which I cut those in the hoop vinyl projects out with. I have the scissors for that. And then these are the pretty scissors that came in the Bella box that look like the Eiffel Tower. Isn't that pretty? Um, so that's all the things I keep in my little, my little toolbox here, um, which I use these things like every time I'm working. The stiletto, my scissors, my tweezers, my marking, and then the Tide pen to get it off. So those I use every single time. So that was a lot of the things on my list right there. Um, okay. Oh, I forgot my tape. So when you are starting to do in the hoop projects or things where your applique maybe has layers and you need to put something down, but you're scared it's going to get moved or not stay in place before it starts stitching, you can use tape. And this is a paper tape. This one's from Kimber Bell, but you can also just use paper medical tape. I, I used to use masking tape before I got this. Um, so any kind of really low tack, low adhesive tape um, is good to help with keeping your projects in the spot when you need them and not having to use your fingers or the stiletto if you need to, to keep things from moving while it's stitching. So tape is great. And what's the other thing? Oh, I got it right in front of me. Okay. If you have a flatbed machine and it has one of those thread holders um, in it that point to the side and don't point up. I don't like those. Um, I, I personally have had bad luck with the thread coming off like it's supposed to. And sometimes I'd have tension problems or thread breaks. And I found that having a thread stand made it my tension problems go away. Oh, this is actually unscrewing. So this is just a little metal stand. It has a base. You put your thread on it. You put the thread through the top here and then feed it into your machine. So I always have this parked next to my flatbed machine with my thread on it um, instead of using the thread holder that is on the machine. So that is a tip for you. If you're having a lot of tension and thread break problems, it may be the way your thread is coming off and try a thread stand. Um, all right, let's see. Another thing is when you start using, when you start doing applique, so this is not a stabilizer, but this is something I use for every applique project I use, and I cut it off a little bit, but it's called Heat and Bond Light. And it comes in a roll, and it is, it has a paper-like side and an, uh, textured side and this side is adhesive. This is so that it it's almost works like double-sided tape for your fabric. You're going to adhere one side to your fabric and then you're going to adhere your fabric to your shirt or whatever it is you're appliquing. So any applique video um, that you watch from me, you'll see me using heat and bond light. So I actually finally invested in a bolt of heat and bond light. Um, I used to always just buy these rolls and I was like, you know what? I need, I need to bite the bullet and get a bolt. So I actually got like a huge fabric bolt of heat and bond light um, right before Christmas. So this is the last bit of my roll to show you. And when you're doing heat and bond light and you, um, yeah, emphasize the light. It see it's purple. It has light, not heat and bond ultra not heat and bond, any other kind, you need heat and bond light. Because remember we talked about adhesives and the glue sticking to your needle. This is a low adhesive one. So this is okay to sew through. Yes, emphasize the light. Thank you, Terry. All right, so now you have your little tiny piece of fabric. You have the heat and bond light on it. 
you are going to want to iron it while your item is still in the hoop. Okay, so say you're working in a little, you're doing a onesie and you're in a four by four hoop. My normal iron does not fit in here, right? I can't put my iron on here. It's gonna melt the plastic of my hoop. This is a little Cricut mini iron. Look how cute it is. This fits in the hoop. So you can um, adhere any little applique pieces in your hoop, okay? So this comes in really, really handy. I first started with a little travel iron, um, which worked great, but it does not have an auto off feature and I would tend to leave it plugged in all the time. <laughs> I love this one because it comes with this nice big base that you can keep it in and it has an auto off feature. So if you forget it plugged in, it turns off. So really, really recommend if you're gonna get one, get the, the Cricut one. I think also the Oz, I think I'm saying it wrong, but Oslo is a really good brand of irons. Um, they have a mini one too that I see a lot of people use for applique. All right, I think the last thing on my list is hoops. Now this is all going to, to depend on um, what kind of machine you have. But normally when you buy a machine, it only comes with one main hoops, the, especially the lower end machines. It usually just comes with one hoop. But if you buy anything um, with a fly, uh, bigger than a four by four hoop size, you have, diff you have more options. So when I got my PE 800, I bought a hoop set for it. And with that hoop set, I got an extra five by seven. So now I had two. I got a four by four hoop. I got this cute little, I think it's two by three or two by one and a half, something like that. Um, little hoop. And then this is a, a whole nother field, but the PE 800 has the ability to use a multi-positionable hoop. Um, and this is a five by 12 multi-positionable hoop for that machine. Um, the four by four machines also have a multi-positionable hoop. I think it's four by seven. So when you get a hoop set for either one of those machines, you'll get that multi-positionable hoop. And I have a video on how to use this. Um, if you get the next stepped up machine, the NQ1700, is the next step up from the PE 800. That one has a six by 10 hoop. So when you get that hoop set, you get a six by 10, a five by seven, a four by four, and the little two by one and a half. So having extra hoops and having multiple sizes of hoops, if your machine didn't come with them already, is also super helpful because you're not always gonna use the same size hoop. It all depends on the project that you are embroidering. So whew, I need a sip of coffee, hold on. <laughs> I am parched. I'm talking a lot. So that is it for my list of all of my go-to things that I use on a regular basis when I am embroidering. So now I'm sorry I have been neglecting the chat, um, but let me know our, for my experienced embroiderers embroiderers. Are these all the things you use too? Do you have any tips of things that I'm missing that you think I should try out? And for my new people, are you overwhelmed? <laughs> Let me know what you think. Because I, if you told me all of this when I started, I'd be like, I just see the dollar signs. Get little pieces at a time. Um, if you can't spend, you know, $200 on thread right now, Get your basic rainbow, your Roy G. Biv, black and white, um, and go from there. The spools of thread, I think, are like $3.50 a spool. So get, get your little rainbow, black and white, and, and start with that. And then add to your collection um, whenever you have a little bit extra money. When you're starting with stabilizers, um, I, if I had to narrow it down. I would get a cutaway, a tearaway, and a water-soluble topper. Get those three to start with, and then add on the others um, when you have the extra money. Then what else? 
all some of the other little things are going to be just like one-time purchases or maybe once in a while you have to replace them like the little scissors um I did replace those over the years because they lost their sharpness but this newest pair that I got the Havels brand this one's been the best one yet um but that's it you know get those when you start doing applique and floating then get your spray adhesive then get your heat and bond light just know that you're going to need those things when you start applique um you can get a little mini travel iron for like 15 bucks i think at walmart um if you want to start with that and then if you see you really like it then get you a more expensive iron with the auto off feature so um those are just all things to keep in mind there are lots of things that you absolutely need to start and then you'll see over time you're going to want to add to your supplies and these are just things that make it easier and make the outcome of your embroidery look so much better there there are lots of things in here that really help your final product just look so much better so i'm just gonna check the chat um all right okay let's see simone has a question Hope you guys can help. Four by four embroidery grid that goes in the hoop does not match the notches on the side of the hoop. Am I doing it wrong? Um, okay, so this is a good, I use those grids for placement all the time. You wanna make sure it snaps in. So one thing, where is my grid? Doot, doot, doot. Let me see, it might be in a drawer over here, which is right in front of the camera. I'm gonna use a giant grid to show you because my other ones I can't get to right now. But this is a giant hoop with a giant grid. Okay. Let me, let me click it in here so it doesn't fall out. Okay, this is a nine and a half by nine and a half hoop. This is on my big um, Altair embroidery machine. This is the grid that comes with it. If I have my grid this way, it fits. No, oh, it doesn't. That's not a good example. I think on my five by seven hoop, if I have it in the wrong way, it won't fit. On my brother and baby lock grids, there is a picture of a hoop with a little ABC on it. Make sure when you're looking at it, you can read the ABC is in the right so that you don't have it upside down on accident. So that is my, my suggestion that I'm pretty sure might be the problem. Is the hoop you're talking about one that came with your machine or is it a what we call a, um, aftermarket or off-brand um, hoop? Because sometimes those grids don't fit the, um, the hoops as well or not as easy to tell which direction they go. I know with some of my smaller hoops too, there's like a little circle cutout. That circle cutout I think always goes in the upper right corner if I'm re remembering correctly. So try those things and let me know if that helps. Okay. Oh, yeah. Walk by Fates um, suggested. This is something um, people have told me about before, and it's another product by Dime, which is the same people that make my thread. Um, they make these little wool pressing pads that fit perfectly um, in the hoop. So ah, things are falling off my pegboard. Okay. This is the 5 by 7 hoop for my PE800. They have a little wool pressing pad that fits perfectly in there. So if I need to press something, um, I can put that right underneath and then use my little mini iron to press it. So that's a really nice um, thing to have. I have a wool, I forgot to mention, I do have a little wool pressing pad, but it just it's one that just fits on my craft table and I just use it when I need it. It doesn't fit. The hoops don't fit in it. I just put the hoops on top of it. All right. Oh, yeah, Star makes a good point. Um, down the road, you may want to check out magnetic hoops as well. And Dime makes those. Um, and I actually, I don't have a Dime one. I think I have an Embrodex one. Um, that's a 5x7 that fits my PE800. But I want to get some of the Dime ones for my bigger machines. But they're, they are hoops with two pieces, but they are magnetic. So it makes hooping a lot easier because they just snap together. All right. Let's 
let's see what else. Um, okay. Uh, Lysia X, can I rewatch this live? I missed a little. Yes. So the replay of this will be posted on both my YouTube channel and my Facebook page to where you can rewatch. Um, you had a question that I didn't address in the live. You can post it in the comments and I'll try to get back to you after. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yeah. So Susan tweezers. I did not realize how much and love tweezers until I got, I got, I never had any. And then I got a new machine and the little toolkit that came with that machine had the tweezers in them. So it's my Ricoma or my tweezers. These tweezers came with my Ricoma. Now I can't live without them. I'm like, how did I live without tweezers? It's such a basic thing, but it is so, so helpful. So helpful. All right. Jenny has another dime product for us. So the dime hooping mat, it's under $20 and makes a workstation so that the hoop doesn't slide while hooping. I have heard great things about that too, Jenny. Thanks for that suggestion. So, um, all right. Norma said she bought the wool pressing pads um, and used them when we did the holiday workshop. Nice. Um, Kim asked, how are the magnetic hoops for the flatbed machines? They're really nice. Um, and depending on what you're working on, they make life a lot easier. Like I know my friend Brenda in the Facebook group, I think she hoops everything with her magnetic hoops. She's got the six by 10 and she's got a five by seven. And I think that's all she uses. Okay, Paula X, if I was happy with the brand of Magnetic Hoop, the Embroidex one. To be honest, I haven't used it that often. Um, I, it only fits one machine. And I don't, I, I use that machine when I'm doing tutorials. But like on a regular basis, I'm not using it. So I need to get Magnetic Hoops for my other machines that I use more often. Um, but when I did use it, it worked fine. The difference between the brand I got versus the dime is that the bottom is metal. You put your item and then it has little individual magnets. So for me, that makes hooping it a little bit easier because then I can put it and move the magnets with the dime ones. This whole flat piece is magnetic and this whole flat piece and they snap together. So it's not super adjustable once you have your item in there. But I, ha I don't have any bad things to say about the Embroidex one. Okay. Oh, Norma, left, Norma pointed out a very big thing that I left out. So we're talking about supplies. Um, these are the tools that I'm using whenever I'm embroidering something. But there's a really big component that I didn't mention, and that is fabric. <laughs> um, you probably can't see, but I have this cubby shelf down here and it is full of fabric. Um, and the fabric I use for specifically is for applique. And then when you start getting into in the hoop projects, I use faux leather. So I have rolls of, uh, you can call it embroidery vinyl, you can call it marine vinyl, um, faux leather. Um, for those projects. So once you get into it and you see all the things that you can make, then you'll start picking up, you know, fabric, little fat quarters that you catch on sale, um, blank shirts and onesies. I have a whole uh, box full of onesies, baby hats, baby gowns, bibs, burp cloths, um, and then shirts by a variety of sizes. So whenever someone asks me to make something, I have it or whenever I need a baby gift or I need a wedding gift, I have towels in my in my closet ready to go to monogram for wedding gifts. Um, all, you're going to start seeing when you're at the store. Oh, that would look good with some embroidery on it. Oh, that would look good with some embroidery on it. Now I have my friends doing that. I actually had a, one of my um, my friends last night at dancing school has a little girl that's um, two. And now she's, when she's at the store and she sees like a little dress and it's, you know, nothing on it. And she's like, oh, that would look good with Madden's name on it. <laughs> she gave me some dresses last night just to put her name on it. So uh, you'll start picking up those things 
when you start shopping, you'll notice. All right. Lots of people saying they love the dime magnetic hoops. Um, so Dawn is enjoying today's video and the possibilities are endless. Yes, they are, Dawn. They are endless. So a couple things to keep in mind when you get started. You need to have a budget to get your basic things. You need to start saving money for all the things that you're going to want in the future. <laughs> this is not a cheap hobby. Unfortunately, it is not. Um, one, of the, one of my other hobbies is vinyl. And I, got, I have a silhouette cutting machine and I have sticky vinyl and heat transfer vinyl. That hobby is not as expensive. The machine is cheaper. The vinyls, it depends on where you get it from. If you buy it in rolls, it can be a lot cheaper. Embroidery expands a lot, um, a lot more. There's a lot more accessories you're going to see that you can use with your machine that will make your life easier. Um, and then there's so many things that you can make. So know that in, when you step in, because a lot of times I have friends that also have silhouettes and they like, you know, look, start looking into embroidery and see how much just the machine costs and that turns them off right away. So, you know, you're invested in this machine, make sure you have the right tools so that you get the most out of it, you know? So get the basics that you need and then add on a little bit at a time. Another mindset to keep in that this is what I did was when I bought my machine and I bought all my supplies, I'm like, okay, I, I've invested this much in my machine. When I got comfortable enough to make things for gifts and make things for other people, I told my friends, I posted things I made on Facebook and I started getting requests. By the end, I want to say maybe six months. Uh, and that was doing, you know, not very much at all. I had made enough money selling little baby um, and kid embroidered items that paid off my machine and my supplies. So if you are struggling with spending this much money, considering now not saying go open an Etsy shop or, you know, post all over the internet. Um, but just tell your friends and family are going to keep you in business <laughs> so that you um, have a budget to buy craft supplies that that that's the main thing. Now you can start an Etsy shop and do amazing things. I have tons of friends um, here on YouTube that have Etsy shops and they blow me away. So there's always that possibility. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, Trish has a question. So in December, we did um, these cute Christmas tree cake um, earrings on the embroidery machine. Let's see. Oh, she, Hobby Lobby and Michaels um, did not have the white vinyl. I went to their section uh, where they have large rolls of fabrics and plastics. Okay, so they had the white vinyl in the big upholstery section. They didn't have it in the little ribbon section. Okay, thanks for that note. Yay, Cecilia says she learned something new every time she watches Sip and Stitch. I'm so glad you do. And thank you for watching. All right. Diane X is, do I have a scan and cut too? I do. Oh wait, I pressed the wrong button. Um, I do, but I still haven't played with it. <laughs> that is on my to-do list this year is to play with my scan and cut and learn it. And then maybe we'll do some projects with the scan and cut and embroidery together. <laughs> All right. Okay. So any, um, were there any questions that I missed that maybe you typed a while back and I didn't see an answer? Let me know, or if you have any closing questions, anything um, that didn't make sense today that I can clear up for you. So, all right. Okay, Patricia has a good one. What ma machine do you recommend to start? I recommend the Brother PE800 Embroidery Machine. That is the machine I started with 
and I used for six years before I upgraded. Now, the whole time I had it, I wanted to upgrade, but I was able to make a ton of things with that machine. I specifically focused on children and baby items. So the things I were embroidering were really small. Um, And then I had the issue of my girls got older, their shirts got bigger. Five by seven wasn't big enough anymore. (laughs) Um, But there are tons of things that you can make in a five by seven and four by four hoop. So if you're going to start, start with that one, learn the craft, make the things, fall in love with it. And then you'll know if you are ready to invest in a more expensive, larger machine with bigger hoop and more features. So start with that PE 800. And there's something else, I mean, to always keep in mind, you start with a machine doesn't mean you're glued to it for life. Learn it, use it, you'll be able to sell that. (laughs) You can sell it and take that money and put towards uh, a bigger machine. So starting the PE 800. Okay, let's see. All right. And then, um, okay, Susan said, I missed mine, but I don't know what the question is. All right, Joyce says, does the fusible no-show shrink? Some brands do, I have found. Um, I have had really good luck with my Stay Perfect. So the that is something that has happened to me in the past where I use the fusible no-show and I embroidered my shirt. It looked beautiful. I put it in the wash and dried it and got out and it was all like, it didn't look right. Like when I ironed it, it made it better, but it's still like you could tell the, the actual stabilizer shrunk. And then it pulled the threads in with it when it did that. I've had good luck with the Stay Perfect brand. Um, yes, you can rewatch this video when it's over. It'll be posted on my YouTube channel and Facebook page. Okay, Diane said, I'm about to jump off the embroidery cliff. <laughs> Machine, scan, cut, all of it. How do I take the leap? Um, first, you need to call my friend Jean. So I have a friend at Sewing Machines Plus, and she helps out all of my followers. Her name is Jean. Um, I put on the screen here her direct phone number. So that's the 800 to Sewing Machines Plus, and then that's her extension number. Call her. Tell her I sent you. Tell her what you're interested in, and she will help you pick the best machine for you and in your budget, and she's going to help you get the best deal. And with all of your accessories and supplies to go with it, um, she'll use my coupon code to get you that extra 10% off. Okay. So call my friend Jean. She is going to be the one that is going to be able to help you get the best machine in your budget and hopefully get you a little bit more off of that. So you're not spending your whole budget. (laughs) Um, So give her a call and you can also email her. I think I don't have a thing for her email. Her email is Jean at sewingmachinesplus.com. So if you if you call and she doesn't answer, you could leave a message or you can email her. All right, where was I? Um, thank you, Sanella. Uh, Cindy wants to know about my shirt. <laughs> this is a shirt we made last year. Uh, we did a sublimation um, tutorial and this shirt is my Sip and Stitch Squad. Um, shirt and I sublimated it. And if you go back and find that video, there's a link to get the design for free if you want to make yourself a shirt. Um, I think I had a vinyl option too. So if you just have a, um, a cutting machine, you could cut it out in vinyl. Or if you have a silhouette, uh, if you have a sublimation printer, you can print it out and sublimate it. All right. Ooh, Jackie said she found faux leather at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to have to go find that. Okay. Bonnie says, in your class, will you be covering how to hoop different items um, such as a onesie? Yes. So for my online uh, beginner embroidery course, we will cover how to hoop onesies um, along with a whole bunch of other items. But that will be one of them. Yes. Um, Do I have a smetch? I can't even say the word smetch needle chart. No, I don't. I think. No, I do. I got one, I think, when I went to the applique getaway. It's in a bag somewhere. <laughs> Probably need to find it. That, that's a good resource, yes. 
All right, Clovis wants to ask a good source of four by four embroidery. So when you buy, when you're shopping online for embroidery designs um, and you can just Google embroidery designs and tons of stuff are going to come up. My personal favorite shops are Creative Applique, Applique Alley, Designs by Little Bee, um, Lenny Penny, uh, Embroidery Boutique. There are so many. Um, when you buy a design, it's going to come in multiple sizes, and it's going to tell you that in the description. Almost everything you buy should have a four by four option. So just look for that in the description when you're buying stuff. Um, Sue X favorite baby blanks um, for I get my shirts and onesies from AJ blanks um, is Angela Jasmina. She I found her on on YouTube. She's a um, she has amazing business now, but um, she started her own blanks company and she has hats. She has onesies. She has shirts. I don't think she has other things. Uh, other Blanks companies are Blanks Boutique and ARB. They have blankets. They have bibs. I think they have burp cloths. Um, really pretty, good quality. Um, uh, what do you call the heavyweight um, knit cotton items that you can embroider? Um, let's see. Okay, so Cindy asked about my um, stiletto I got from Sewing Machines Plus. So I have a link for it in the description. Oh, yeah, Norma says, tell them about Creative Fabric. So um, if you are interested in learning more, now I do free tutorials on YouTube. Um, however, I do have a membership group, and it's through Creative Fabrica, which is a great place to get designs from, too. But they have a, a separate site called CF Fans, and it's for creators like me to have a membership for our, our fans. So the CF Fans membership group, I do a private Zoom class um, with the members once a month, and we go over different projects every month. And I give a free embroidery design that I make myself um, to all the group members. So it's a really fun um, place to get extra designs and extra instruction from me. And I love Zoom because then it's a lot more interactive and you can talk to me and ask me questions. Um, you don't have to put your camera on if you don't want to, but I love seeing y'all's faces and hearing voices is so nice. Um, and one cool thing about the CF Fans membership group is that when you join, you get access to all the previous tutorials and designs. So we've been doing it for almost two years now and you can access all of the free designs from the past you know, two years and all of the replays of the Zoom classes on there. And then we have um, a private group for it as well. So if you'd like to join that, I do, I think I have a link for that down below and it is $9 a month. And so you can join and stay in as long as you want. Um, and it's only $9. All right. Oh, Susan has a good question. <laughs> All right. So her question is, how do you get past ruining someone's clothing or merchandise? Does it happen often? And what is your policy for this? When you first start off, I do not recommend you let people give you things to embroider. You want to embroider things that you have already and that you have backup of. <laughs> I learned this the hard way. Until you feel confident in your embroidery that you know what you're doing, you know how to hoop things. Um, you're, you know, you're, if you have to babysit your machine, you are doing it um, so that if something messes up, it's not an item you can't replace. Um, and then spell check is really important. <laughs> Confirm spelling of names 10 times if you have to. Um, and then before you stitch it out. So my one mess up, I actually have two times I had a spelling mess up. Ugh. One time was one of those little like drawstring backpacks from a high school here. And I spelled the name wrong. And with that one, it was like, it was a common name and I just assumed I knew how to spell it. Um, but no, I spelled it wrong. I went to that high school and bought another 
backpack. <laughs> um, I think it was only $10, so it wasn't huge. Then one of my girl's um, friend's dancing bag, I spelled her name wrong. That one, luckily, it was such a thick font, I was able to seam rip it and get it out. So spelling is, is my, is my um, hang up. Um, I'm always paranoid now about spelling. <laughs> um, but until you feel super confident, I, I don't like when people give me things to embroider because it's, it's still like in the back of my head. If I mess this up, how am I going to fix it? Am I going to have to replace it? Where did they get it from? Am I even going to be able to replace it? And then check your spelling 10 times. All right. Um, I see people asking about washing items. No, I typically do not wash items before I embroider them with the exception of things like waffle weave towels, things you know are going to shrink tremendously. Waffle weave towels is one of them. But almost all the shirts and everything you buy come pre-shrunk. So you don't need to wash them before you, um, before you embroider. All right. Okay, so Kathy says she has an NQ 1400. Um, any particulars with this machine? It's still in its case. You're a little intimidated by it. No, this is a great machine. This machine is very similar to the PE 800 that I've been talking about, but it's a, it's it's like an upgrade. So there are a couple of nicer features, but everything that I teach on the PE 800 will apply to your machine. Um, it's just that you have a bigger hoop. I think your machine cuts jump stitches. Um, and basically that's it. And it stitches a little bit faster. So when we need to do a class on machines is what we need to do, because I think a lot of people get hung up on their machine, their model, and nothing else applies. If I, if I teach something that doesn't specifically say their machine and model, then they're worried that that's not helpful to them. It is a lot of the machines are exactly the same when it comes to using them. So um, we'll have to do a class on that um, so that people can understand all the different type of machines and how similar they are with just a few um, different features like hoop size. Um, so everything I teach on the PE 800 is applicable to your machine. Okay, I am like way behind on the comments. So, all right, guys, um, let's answer a few more questions and then we're gonna call it a day. Um, if you didn't get your question answered, um, feel free to post it in the comments below after the video or come join my Facebook group and you can post it in there um, so that I can try and get back to all y'all, okay? All right, yeah, Bonnie said, there's a lot of pressure when someone gives you something to embroider. I, I personally like the things that I make with my supplies and then give it to the person. Um, all right. Okay, Mike, uh, Michael says, when I do a class on the Persona or the, um, the Baby Lock One Needle Machine, okay, I definitely want to do that in the future. All right. All right, yay, I'm glad this is helping you, Susan. Um, okay, so Yvette says she has the 1500D and they don't make it anymore. Is, is it, uh, it is a brother, any suggestions? Also, same, so we need to do a class on this. But if you have an NQ, 1400, 1500, 1600, 1700, 2500, 3600, 3700, um, 3,500, all of those, they are all essentially the same machine with minor upgrades as they've gotten. So Brother 10, they, they have been releasing newer models like almost every year now, um, which makes things confusing <laughs> which for a lot of people. But when you look at a machine, first look at what is the largest hoop size. And comparing all the Brother and Baby Lock machines if they have the same largest hoop size, I group them all together. They might have a few little um, differences in some of the um, features. Like I think the older ones might not cut jump stitches and then the newest ones have Wi-Fi. but the functions of the machine and using the machine are gonna be the same. 
So when you see tutorials, and then even if I'm doing a tutorial with a five by seven hoop and you have a six by 10 hoop machine, it's still like, it can still go together because you can use a five by seven hoop on your machine. You can use a larger design of what I'm using in your six by 10 hoop. So don't let that get in your head just because you have a certain machine, you need a tutorial with that machine, okay? All right. Yeah, Anne said she just got all of her Stay Perfect stabilizers and love them. Yay, glad. All right. Yes. So Steve and Norma um, make a great comment. It's just like when you buy a car, different brand names and buttons to push, but they all drive the same. Yes, that is a great way to think about it. Let's see. Yeah, I see um, Kim and who was it? Ann talking about the NQ1700. So that's the newest six by 10 embroidery machine. Um, I just got one. Um, I, I traded in, I had an older model and I traded it in for the newer one. Um, and the Art Spira app, I saw that on the box, but I haven't played with it yet. So thank you for telling me about it. I need to play with it. Okay. Okay, so Cindy, um, yeah, it's a brother app, right? I haven't played with it yet. It's probably, it might be something like how Baby Lock has IQ Designer. Is something like that? All right, Cindy's asking a design question. So um, is it better to change a design to be bigger or smaller in brilliance? Either way, when you change the size of a design, you're changing the stitching. Whether you're stretching it out or you're making it smaller, you're changing the density. Right when you're stretching it out, now it's less dense. When you make it smaller, it's more dense. In my experience, I've had good luck with not changing a design to where it's not bigger than 20% of the original and not smaller than 20% of the original. And when you have in brilliance, you see those percentages change as you toggle and move the size of your um, your design. So watch those percentages. When you first open it, it's going to say 100. I wouldn't make it bigger than 120. And I wouldn't make it smaller than 80. Um, and if you ever question if it's going to look good stitched out with how much you change the size, do a, excuse me, do a test stitch first. Stitch it out on some scrap fabric. I've even just stitched things out on cutaway stabilizer. See how the stitches look and that it, it still looks good, that you haven't messed with it too much. Now, some digitized designs resize with no problem. Some even if you change it a little bit, it makes the stitches go all wonky. So it's really um, a trial and error thing. And test stitching is the best way to really know if it's going to look good before you put it on your item. All right. Oh, Aspira is the, um, the wireless thing. That's why I haven't played with it yet, because I haven't wirelessly put a design on my new brother machine. I do it with my baby lock all the time but I never had to install anything with it. I just did it in brilliance. So I have to play with it and see about the, um, the 1700E. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you sticking it out with me. I'm so sorry again about my microphone going out for probably what felt like five minutes um, <laughs> or an hour. <laughs> so um, thank you for hanging in uh, with me for that. Um, and if you did not get your questions answered, feel free to put them in the comments or come join the Facebook group. And remember, if you are brand new and you are the type of person that you want somebody to hold your hand and take you in a logical step-by-step -step order of what you need to learn to use your machine, sign up for the wait list for my course from Start to Stitch. Um, now it's not, you know, I'm the queen of looking for things on YouTube for free. And I have tons of free, of free stuff for you on there. But sometimes it you just want somebody to hold your hand. And that's what this, this course is for. And I really go in depth um, into all the things that you need um, to learn to get started. And um, I'm hoping the course will be out in February. But don't hold me to that because I am not the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, at predicting how long it takes me to do things. My husband always, always tells me that. Like every time I tell him 
a time that I'm going to be done doing something, he adds like, and just daily things, he adds an hour. Like if I tell him, oh, I'm going to be done with this at two o'clock. He's like, okay, so I'll see you at three. I'm like, yeah, probably. <laughs> so um, uh, right now the course is in the works. Um, I've got a lot of it done, but it's not finished. And if you get on the wait list, you will get notified when the course opens. So you're not obligated to anything. That is just, if you're interested, um, you'll get notified when the doors do open. Okay. So it's called from start to stitch the link. Let's see if I still have it in my copy paste thing. Yeah. So I'm putting it in the live chat right now and it's also linked in the description. Um, I'll put it in the comments too after so people can find it. But um, that is the info on the beginner embroidery course. It's going to cover all those little things that I wish someone would have held my hand and showed me when I started. So, um, and then for all of my people that know the basics already and want to get more in the advanced things, we will have something for you later. Okay. So just be patient with me. But other than that, y'all keep joining me for Sip and Stitch. Um, I will be back next time. will be January 20th. And we are going to do a Valentine's um, design. So I was talking with my friend Dawn at Creative Appliques. And I found this really cute. Um, it's a frame. And it, it can be, it could not be Valentine's if you wanted, but it's super cute. And, um, and we're going to use the frame and add a monogram in it and make a cute little Valentine shirt. So um, come join me two Fridays from now, January 20th, same, same place, same time um, at 1030 AM central time on both YouTube and Facebook. And um, whenever you're wanting to know what's going on, I try to be good about posting what we're doing ahead of time on the sip and stitch homepage, which is on my website, carlybell.com. Um, slash sip and stitch. I think I have a banner. Do I have a thing? There we go. Um, or you just go to carlybell.com and you'll see it in the, in the menu bar um, where you can see the supplies you'll need, what the project's going to be, the supplies you need. Um, and then you can browse around all the past projects that we have done um, to see if there's anything in there that you want to learn how to make. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Okay, thanks again uh, for joining me today. I appreciate it. And if you're watching the replay, I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. Okay, guys? So um, I will see you next time. And I hope you have a great rest of your Friday and a great weekend. Okay, bye, guys.